F-104 Starfighter was introduced to Pakistani service in 1961, when 10 F-104A single-seat and two F-104B two-seat airframes were delivered under the US military assistance program. They were assigned to Pakistan's number 9 squadron known as Griffins. The Starfighters came from the US Air Force inventory, and they were refurbished with new engines and upward-firing ejection seats. M61 Vulcan guns were reinstalled after having been removed in the American service. According to aviation author Martin Bauman, the delivery of starfighters to Pakistan was directly connected with the famous shootdown of U 2 spy plane flown by Gary Powers. The U 2 took off from Peshawar in Pakistan, and once Soviets learned about it, they threatened Pakistan with nuclear weapons. Americans then agreed to supply starfighters so Pakistan could defend itself from such a threat. Pakistani starfighter pilots were handpicked from F-86 Sabre units and they enjoyed an advanced training program in the USA and in Sargoda, the squadron's home base. In mid-1960s, tensions between Pakistan and India were high. Main reason was the province of Kashmir, claimed and partially controlled by both countries. As Pakistan attempted to gain full control over Kashmir by military means in 1965, an open conflict broke out in August of that year. Apart from 12 starfighters, Pakistani Air Force relied on about 100 F-86 Sabres. Other combat aircraft were B-57 bombers and training aircraft with secondary attack capability. Altogether, about 150 combat-capable aircraft were available. Indian Air Force was about three times larger, but that included a large number of obsolete types such as vampires and uragans. India also had to keep many of its squadrons ready for a potential conflict with China. As a result, its numerical superiority in the 1965 conflict wasn't as pronounced as might be expected, at least not in a short conflict. The only Indian aircraft comparable to F-104 in terms of performance was MiG-21. India had 12 of these Soviet fighters when the war broke out, but the squadron wasn't yet fully operational, and this fighter only saw limited use. Interestingly, India also attempted to purchase F-104 from the USA, but for various reasons, no deal was made. Before the main conflict broke out, there was a smaller one in March of 1965, when Pakistani forces entered the area called Ran of Kutch. Neither country used their air force to support ground troops, but two Pakistani starfighters were detached to Moripur Air Base, and they flew combat air patrols near the border. On one such patrol, they intercepted an Indian Canberra on a recon mission. They followed the Indian airplane for about 10 minutes, but they were not allowed to shoot it down. When the main conflict over Kashmir started in August, first by an infiltration of Pakistani forces pretending to be local Kashmiri population, and on 1st of September with an open attack against Indian forces, Pakistani starfighters began to fly numerous combat air patrol missions in the region, many of those at night. Here is where the type's limitations first became obvious. Starfighter's radar was optimized for detection of high-flying bombers. It couldn't detect low-level targets and therefore, Starfighter pilots depended heavily on ground control to make successful interceptions. Indian Canberra pilots could evade Starfighter combat air patrols by flying below 1000 feet, but they were lost in ground clutter. Pakistani pilots attempted to fly even lower, trying to acquire the Canberra's visually. The first significant contact with the enemy for the Pakistani starfighters took place on 3rd of September 1965. Four Indian Mistairs were flying on medium altitude. They were escorted by eight fallen Nats from No. 23 Squadron following them at 100 feet of altitude. A 
combat air patrol of two F-86Fs led by squadron leader Yusuf Khan was sent to intercept the Mysteres, but then they were attacked by the Nats in Sialkot sector. The Sabre leader's airplane was damaged by Indian squadron leader Trevor Keeler. This is claimed by India as the first aerial victory of the war, but Pakistani sources deny that, as Khan eventually landed his sabre back to base. The fight developed and Pakistani wingman was ordered to disengage as one of his fuel tanks failed to jettison. But after about 10 minutes of fighting, an F-104 starfighter flown by flying officer Abbas Mirza appeared. He had been scrambled to assist the sabers. Abbas described the weather as very hazy. He was at 15,000 feet and was told by the GCI to accelerate to 600 knots as the Sabre leader needed urgent assistance. Another F-104 flown by Flight Lieutenant Hakimula was scrambled and vectored to the area after Abbas. Abbas spotted the Sabre leader about a mile ahead of him, with a bunch of gnats on his tail. As Abbas was much faster than the aircraft involved in the dogfight, he decided to pass ahead of the Sabre to show that reinforcement was there. Abbas then disengaged his afterburner and pulled up a yo-yo maneuver. Indian Nats broke away and headed towards the border. But one of the Nats flown by squadron leader Bridgepal Singh Sikhand was separated and apparently disorientated. He spotted a disused Pakistani airfield at Pasrur and landed there believing to be in Indian territory. You might find some sources claiming that Sikhand was forced to land by the starfighters. But according to Peter Davis, who quotes Abbas, neither he nor the second starfighter pilot, Hakimula, spotted Sikhan's net before he landed. The British fighter produced under license in India was extremely small, and visibility on that day was poor. The nets involved in the combat were low on fuel when the starfighters arrived, and the Indian pilot Sikhand claimed that his radio, compass and hydraulics had failed, which could explain his navigation error, and qualified this as a mistake rather than a surrender. But still, this embarrassing mistake didn't prevent Sikhand from eventually becoming an air marshal of the Indian Air Force. Apart from combat air patrol and escort missions, Pakistani starfighters were also flying improvised reconnaissance sorties over Indian air bases. As they had no dedicated recon pods, handheld cameras were used. On some of these occasions, two-seat F-104Bs were used, and the starfighters flew inverted at as low as 150 feet over the ground. Airplane stability resulted in some useful photos. On 6th of September, the conflict developed into a full-scale war. Two Pakistani starfighters were flying at dawn cap at 15,000 feet. They were flown by Flight Lieutenants Aftab Alam Khan and Amjad Hussein. Pakistani pilots were guided by GCI towards four Indian Mystairs attacking railway fuel tankers near Gakhar. Mystairs were led by squadron leader Patrick Earle. Aftab Alam Khan remembers that he asked for a permission to go to lower altitude and attack the Mystairs. He was initially denied, as the radio contact would be lost in that case. So, Alam left his wingman at 15,000 feet to act as radio relay and dove towards the flashes on the ground. He 
he was surprised to see that he was flying head on into a formation of four mistairs. Indian pilots turned into the F-104 and low-level combat began. Alam remembers using flaps to increase his turn rate. The stick shaker was helpful to determine the aircraft's limits, but the starfighter was responsive. It was still quite dark, so Alam was struggling to keep the Mysteries in sight, while they had no problem tracking his afterburning fighter. After some maneuvering, Alam positioned himself behind two of the Mysteries. Pakistani pilots were ordered not to launch their AIM-9B missiles at such low altitude, but Alam was still confident he could achieve a hit. Alam checked his range, got a good tone and squeezed the trigger. The missile flash temporarily blinded Alam, so he didn't observe the hit. He zoom climbed immediately after the launch. He was quickly informed by his radar controller that the Indian flight reported one mistair shot down and another damaged over the radio. Alam was then instructed to turn right and look for the remaining two mistairs. He obeyed, but couldn't find them. Just like many incidents between Indian and Pakistani air forces, the two sides disagree on the result. The fight took place near Rawali airfield in Pakistan, and some sources say that the mistair wreckage was found. Others say that Pakistani forces only saw fire and explosions on the ground. Indian side claims that the fire came from drop tanks jettisoned by a mistair and that no aircraft were lost. Pakistan, however, recognized Alam Khan's skill and they considered this to be the first victory achieved by an F-104, as well as the first missile kill by Pakistani Air Force. This was part 1 of our video about F-104 Starfighter in the 1965 Indo-Pakistani conflict. There are some very interesting and controversial clashes left to be covered, including the disputed shootdown of one Starfighter. Part 2 will come out next week and be sure not to miss it because for some reason, second parts usually perform much worse and YouTube algorithm doesn't seem to recommend them so much. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal to keep the channel in business and keep watching Showtime 112.